Hello, hello, hello. It is raining outside and the rhododendron flowers are coming out uh, in different pink shades. I don't know if that shows. So, and I'm wearing a self-sewn outfit, complete my complete outfit is self-sewn except for the socks and the winter boots including my pants everything is self-sewn and it is really really cozy and i love it it's my cozy home outfit so i can't wear that in public of course unless i go to a halloween party <laughs> but I'm not planning on going to a Halloween party to get the virus <laughs> so, and that won't be until October anyway so first comes the summer and we are going back to the high desert and I'm looking forward to this so now I have something to actually look forward to and you know in the meantime I got pretty discouraged I thought this isn't going anywhere <laughs> I really thought that I thought Paul is never gonna get what we need you know he tries to cut corners he might promise something and then he changes his mind the next day. You know, he might promise the real commercial heavy duty industrial greenhouses and then ne the next day he goes, nah, they're too expensive. Let me get one of those, this, this, the, the hobby <laughs> sheds that you assemble yourself. Okay, then the next windstorm is going to blow that far away from your pro property. And you have to go find it somewhere way out there <laughs> in the lake bed. <laughs> and not only that, it can hurt an, a, another living being as, as that flies off, you know. So, <sighs> man, it's hard to debate these things with him and try to convince him that we have to have the industrial commercial greenhouses. I contact, contacted an architect from Ashland, Oregon before, real nice man and I know architects are busy, my dad is an architect so for him to write back several times and give me good advice that was very very nice of him and i said we need to get a dome house you know sort of like that glass half glass dome at the getty center i don't know if you've seen it but that is pretty stellar you know that is custom made that's not some that's not a pre-manufactured thing that is being sold. So the get the half dome of the Getty Center is that's built by Richard Meyer, and that is that's like a spaceship industrial strength structure, and I've always admired that. And I've always wanted something like I've always wanted a home like that. So I asked him, how much would that cost? <laughs> well, that's cost somewhere in the millions. Yeah. Got it. So, uh, yeah, I got it. I understand. I don't have the money. So, and he said, yeah, but for something like that, if it's something that simplistic, you know, just basically a glass dome or dome tunnel, then you can get that ready-made, commercially sold. 
and I don't know how much that costs to have that assembled. I, I, we don't, we can't assemble that. And that's way too big. That has to be. I don't know how much they charge for the assembly. That's probably another. That might be another fifty thousand. Who knows? So, but yeah, he said those are those are way more reasonable than having that build from scratch. Something like the Getty Dome. So, or you know the geodesic domes by Buckminster Fuller and all those. That was the first architect who has come up with this idea and that was also around the time of Rudolf Steiner who also himself has looked into these kind of formations for architecture. Rudolf Steiner was multifaceted, multi-talented thinker and he got into all of this holistic living you know so he's really the the godfather of holistic living and sustainable living you know not living not building some stick figure house <laughs> made out of two by fours made out of wood that was cut out of trees, you know, that, which is a crime to cut trees down, okay. and then it rots, it gets water damage, it gets termite damage, it doesn't last, it, it, the winds are gonna blow all of those down, you're gonna see it, so it's already happening, you know, in some areas, so it's just gonna get worse with this, with the weather patterns that are completely go going out of control you know, like in areas where you have never seen it before so we have seen storms here that they had never had storms here in this region we had storms so bad it blew entire branches thick branches off branches like this thick were th thrown down that can hurt an, a living being real scary for the animals, the wild animals, the birds were, they're absolutely terrified. They were screaming. I heard them scream. The squirrels were screaming. They needed to, f to find some cave to go into. It's all terrible. The owls, you know, they're terrified. They sleep during the day. They need to find a safe place to sleep in. The forests are the homes of the animals, of the wild animals. Don't cut those down. So we need to rethink completely and you need to you need to completely get rid of the old ways of handling anything. Okay. That goes against the ego, but that's good for us that's real good for us to do that's very healing to do to completely reform your way of thinking and doing about anything even toilets <laughs> need to be reformed i'm not kidding you you know we did it we reformed to composting toilets works wonderfully yeah it's even less it is less work actually even you know it is even it's it's easier even to, it's amazing and i just love i love composting you know i love being out there in the garden even you know having to go out there in the rain which i wouldn't do if i just kept using the flush toilet so the flush toilet is resting along now never being used again it, it also had some kind of weird leaks somewhere in the plumbing down there which caused a an aquatic smell in the bathroom to say the least <laughs> and some moldy musty kind of smell which attracted rats and mouses and then they pooped under the toilet too <laughs> 
so which is weird you know and then after we quit all of that then there was mouse still coming once in a while but then I I scattered the peelings from garlic you know the outer peelings of the garlic the, the outer skin we kept that we shredded that and I scattered that under the toilet the flush toilet and then after I, I had been doing that for a couple of weeks only that stopped all those other beings from coming there and hanging out there because they don't like the smell of garden. So there are so many amazing, simple, straightforward, holistic, healthy, safe, environmentally friendly solutions out there. Let's just use it. You just apply it. It's really a matter of knowing it, knowing about it. And it's all a matter of watching the right videos, reading the right commentaries, the right articles, you know. So, reading the right magazines, you know, the older magazine has taught me a lot. It's an environmental magazine. So, instead of cosmopolitan, where you, d you don't learn very much. You just learn more neur neurotic way of ways of thinking from other neurotic people. That's all it, that's all it, there is to it. The Vogue magazine's a little bit more intellectual. So I have been getting that, but it's just way too expensive. Cost $10 for the Vogue magazine. Are they kidding? I mean, this is really insane. So, but yeah, but I have one at the other house that I kept there. I, once in a while I look at the fashion. Marc Jacobs is really cool, you know, so the model they use is cool. Billie Eilish is in that. She's the hottest woman on earth. So, yeah incredible some people are incredible mark jacobs makes i wish he would quit smoking so it'll be even better and i like alessandro Alessa alessandro michele who is the fashion designer and director for gucci at this moment so. and absolutely fantastic they they do teamwork with artists, famous, famous, famous Japanese artist Takashi Murakami. And I'm absolutely delighted to see that. That's a great merger. That's a that's that's think tank coming together, you know. That's artistic cooperation, you know, collaboration. It's wonderful. So this is this is really great to see that to see artists come together and work together. So open-minded people that are that are really living for the flow. Those are brains I would love to work together with. That I. Would love to meet, and also artist Jonathan Mese from Germany. He's among the top hundred modern artists of the world today. My brother has known him. They have been, they have been, I don't know, friends. They hung out together before he was famous, and then they lost touch. My brother saw him just a while back. He saw him on the street with his mother, waved to him, he waved back, but my brother was shy and didn't want to bother him because he knows he's constantly bombarded by people. So, and I remember a long time ago, my brother said, before Yonatan was, was famous, my brother said, I know this guy we, that we hang out with, he's just like you. He thinks like you, he talks like you, 
he's just as quirky and weird and dorky and and way out there and open and crazy and all of that just like you you know that'd be the perfect guy for you and I thought well bring him on bring him over I'm waiting he never brought him to my attention he never he so wrapped up with his own life he never introduced us to each other and then he quickly became very famous and then there's no way to get a hold of Jonathan Mise so because there's already another three million or ten million people who are trying to talk to him and writing to him and so on and on and on and on so there's no way so once they're famous there's no way I can I mean that I'll be in a an un unimaginable coincidence that you would catch someone like this in some situation where there is not millions of people paparazzis and all of that so. and then when they are finally somewhere where they have peace of mind they don't want to be they don't want another person coming up. Hey, I, you are uh, Jonathan. I would like to meet you. Yeah, I know. Eight billion other people do too. So yeah, this is a this is bad. This is not a good situation. On the internet, it's different. You know, on the internet, I go up to people and I say, Yeah, you are my dream man. Yeah, you. I want to be with you. You know, Louis House and. And and in the past it was Vin Diesel, and now it's Lee Asher. So it's always someone you know I admire, I adore, I would like to meet. <coughs> but the chances for me to meet a celebrity like that <coughs> they are very low. So I have met Ben Goethe. Ben Goethe is one of the coolest guys on the whole planet. One Ben Goethe is one of the most approachable, funnest and and amazing brains out there. And yeah, and I one went up to him on the internet, you know, I went up to him on on Facebook and I got to meet him and his son Zarathustra and I had many discussions with Zarathustra the name <laughs> from the book Friedrich Nietzsche he's also a Nietzsche fan so Ben and I have a lot in common we could talk endlessly for the rest of our lives sitting at the cemetery together at night talking endlessly 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 about Nietzsche and and the dissolution of the ego and so on and on and on and on and about the AGIs he he is a very world famous AGI brain developer and I am so I am so impressed and so happy that he took the time to talk to me and write me back many times you know, even though he has so much work to do and but he lives in Hong Kong now okay with his I don't know Chinese wife they have a daughter together and they have dogs they're dog lovers and she is also a program developer. She's also an absolute super brain. And so, of course, they have the most in common, you know. They're both, both math brains, they're both program developers. And so that I can't do, you know. But I can 
talk to them about Nietzsche and the dissolution of the ego. That I can do. Okay, and I love love his wife too. I would never take him away from her. Okay, they they are a very good match. They have great chemistry. She's a sweetheart. And so that was really, really, really lovely to talk to him. And I said, I wished, oh man, I wished, I wished, I wished there were more people like him. There were, I wish there were people like him in my area here, you know. And not, not just the, the average fundamentalist. You know. <laughs> I can't talk to a fundamentalist. I'm sorry. It stops already with the weather. <laughs> you think you can talk about the weather at least? No. No. You can't. So. <laughs> They're global warming deniers. They're, I mean, they're, they're, in, they're believing all kinds of propaganda from the corporate agenda. And if I talk against that, then they go insane. So, yeah, this, they're rigid. There's, there's, they're not flexible. They want to dictate also the conversation. They want to dictate to other people what they believe, what they were dictated to by others. So yeah, there's n it's not, not a real conversation possible. So I'm doing the conversation now with my computer, who doesn't talk back. <laughs> and whoever watches my videos, you know, they'll probably get mad. <laughs> then don't watch the video. No. <sighs> and for those people that are interested in what I have to say, please comment back. Please, you know, don't think that you have nothing to contribute. That's what I see a lot in a lot of people. You know, so many times I try to do a live chat that that wouldn't work technologically anyway because I didn't have the right computers and also my YouTube channel is not I don't have enough subscribers for that so but I've been trying to even plan something like this and it didn't work just from the planning it alone you know we want oh on Facebook that would have worked you know we can do a conference call on Facebook Messenger so we were planning on that and everyone chickened out everyone chickened out even the the people that in the beginning said yes of course yes yes and then ah they chickened out diane too uh, antinatalist child free diane i almost got her on my bed wanted to talk to you you know you amazing smart cookie you okay i love you i know you can't stand me but <laughs> but i love you anyway i love all of you guys you know all of you antinatalists you're all my you're my family you know even though i'm not an antinatalist anymore so i have just i i healed my way through you know? so being an antinatalist is that is a d that's a depressed state of mind. I don't know about Dr. David Benatar, but and he's not even coming at it from some kind of like a rigid or kind of like a dictational type of philosophy. He's coming in it from food of thought only. He knows that that is very, very theoretical, what he brings to the world. And it's very important what he brings to the world. The arguments against putting another living being into existence, okay, they're absolutely rock-solid arguments. You cannot argue against it. You can't. Not from a logical 
philosophical point of view not even from from a mother feeling oxytocin you know compassionate biological point of view either so it's absolutely clear you know but i know one thing is that that we are we're proliferating biological machines and even the antinatalists have that in them they deny it they block it off that's a responsible thing to do but it's also going against their own biology so that far i can really clearly understand that now i can clearly see now that is lean back and put my leg up all right whatever so all right i got it i had to lean back for my back so i can clearly see that now that the internationalist viewpoint is a very synthetic and a very cortical prefrontal cortical action and it's good and it's important no other animal i think mm -hmm. does that and also if they had that and the whales do have that but they live in a diff completely different medium they don't live in a in a world with internet and technology this is only possible on air on land this the the development of technology that doesn't make the the ones in the water less brainy it's very important to say that too, because a lot of people always argue and say well they don't have technology they don't develop rockets to go to mars no. they can't because they're in water yeah, so th so th there's no way and they don't have that overview and the perspective on the population the possibility of the population going out of control to the point where it becomes unsustainable they don't see this the way we can see it they don't have big cities where where they where it becomes very obvious so they have groups they form groups they swim in groups they communicate over vast distances through echolocation okay they have a very developed developed cochlea that is that's the eardrum that is way way more complex and developed and evolved than ours and way bigger so and they need to that for real complex processing of vibrations in the water echo vibrations they 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 they, they shoot out a sound and the echo that comes back is then processed by the brain and that requires unimaginable cognitive processing with spindle cells that are for cognitive and abstract reasoning okay. an unimaginable detailed way of assessing the environment through the echo that comes back to them highly complex beings and then people go the japanese whale hunters go out there and they view them like like fish and they don't understand any biology of the whales at all 
how complex they are and and those fishermen they also they don't care they only they own they're completely thinking in their own profit making way and based on greed and all of that and not based on compassion it's horribly sad but the creating weapons and all of this you know and having hands that's also you know having this the combination cortex and hands that's really that's that's what makes this into a yin and yang that's what makes it into a difficult situation here on land so in the water they didn't need to do evolve like that they didn't hey sustainability <laughs> hey 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 nice to see you <laughs> so here on land you know we evolved into the f- the five fingers or five toes all of us mammals here on land so and then some of course evolve again away from the five fingers but we all started out with this because that was the way of crawling around of moving forward quickly also and then doing things once they became bipedal they started to use the hands for tool making and climbing and and touching things and handling things and moving things around and stuff like and then there was this direct function between the hands and the cortex in the water an arm like this would be would be impractical okay that's why there there are no mermaids with arms okay so whales and mana manatees man i think manatees they're called in Florida and different types of ocean m- marine mammals that are constantly in the water for them having an arm like this appendage like this that would be that would not be working very well because that those appendages would stop them from moving fa- fast forward in the ocean so it didn't evolve in that direction so they can't be handling something like this and then have this the handling and the brain activity happening in correspondence which which creates an even more intense learning effect in the brain the more we handle and touch the more the brain learns and processes the movements and the the tactile information and so on so the whales process the echolocation and that's an entire world of course just like smell is an entire world for dogs that's way more developed the olf- olfactory nervous system in dogs okay and we studied that also in London Germany i had a real great professor for physiological psychology she was also a physician and what a bra- what an amazing brain that woman is i miss her a lot cool that i met her i met some cool people in my life off and on but the thing is that you know if it's your professor they're really busy they're not going to have a lot of time to be hanging out with a student and and Ben Gertze is really really busy <laughs> you know he doesn't he doesn't ha- just doesn't have the time to talk to some person somewhere from around the world and 
Henry Rollins talk talk to me too. He's really cool too. But he wrote about oh, he wrote back a few times, you know. Wrote back in regards to something philosophical about humans. I know he's a deep thinker as well, but he doesn't have time. You know, just, just, they simply don't have time. I have time. <laughs> I have a lot of time. <laughs> because I got nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, we have to clean up the house. We have to fix up the house. So, and for that, it's good not to have the internet, because I would be watching Sam Wagner's videos non-stop if I had the internet. I'm not going back in the chat room, even, even if I had the internet here, I wouldn't go back in the chat room. Just wouldn't. Okay? I want to heal my mind. I want to be treated well, not abused. I hope that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So I know that the abusers don't want to be abused either. But they don't they can't do the mirror effect from them to others in a healthy way, you know, they can't they can't put themselves into someone else's shoes in that way. Which that is what the mirror effect is in the brain. You feel empathy, you feel you like like you feel like you are the other person or you are one with the other person or you see things from the other person's perspective that's very difficult for the hater to do and that that's where they're at they are at that state of mind okay. and he doesn't want to be shown and I you know I have to just acknowledge that that's where they're at and I'm not going to change them. I can give them helpful information, but I can't make someone change. They have to really want to change themselves and not just not not to use that word change so much as if, you know, that's like that's that's kind of force. It's kind of change the word change has this implication of I need to force myself and that's more like a top-down processing that's not really that's not really so functional so what's much more functional is if someone understands something like I said yesterday there's a bus coming towards me and someone else says, do you see the bus coming to I see a bus way in the horizon, but that bus is aiming right at us. And in 10 hours, that bus is going to hit us. So I recommend you to move out of that line of driving. This is just some theoretical example now. Okay. to make things more understandable. The bus is going to be driving right over this line where I'm standing in 10 hours. So it would be good to get out of the way. Or if, you know, if you see water receding at the beach, it recedes way odd. Then you know there is there's a tsunami happening that sucks the water out at first. And then creates enormous waves that are coming towards the shore. You have a bit of a time. You have like, I don't know how much time you have. Maybe 10 minutes? It's just like with the bus, the theoretical scenario. You, know? you, you have a more concrete scenario with the tsunami. You have about, I don't know how many minutes. You have to research that. You better research that. So, you have to get out of there immediately. You have to bring all of your animals, your horses, your dogs, cats, guinea pigs, birds, rabbits. Bring all of, free all the birds, the ones that 
that have their wings clipped you have to bring them in your van okay and you have to get the heck out of there and you have to move up to higher elevations as fast as possible okay. I'm using this as a physical example these physical examples stand as metaphors for emotional examples okay. and that's what Jiddu Krishnamurti was trying to convey to the public that once we understand an emotional situation once you understand for example that religion is like a bus coming towards you and it's gonna hit you it's gonna run you over okay or segregation like I talked about it yesterday once you understand that fully understand it not top-down not like it's imposed on you that information like a like so many of us sit in school and have the top down you know the teacher tells us something and we don't even question it once we start questioning the stuff then we have a bottom-up processing then we have a my own brain is processing this trying to understand really understand it once I really understand it then I can think this through does this work actually does this work for him does this work for her does this also work for me in my situation with my brain with my way of thinking these questions have to be asked okay these are all actions of intelligence that that are real innate intelligence most people have disconnected themselves from that because they are living in a state of ego and that is top-down processing tribalism tribalist information top-down processed dictated into them brainwashed into them brain dirtied into them so and and then they don't do intelligent processing that is bottom-up processing and that's very dangerous and that's a bus coming towards you every time someone says to you let me use another example every time someone says to you you better not take I don't know. That I want to use a good example that's also happening in real in the in real life. There's someone coming to you towards you who says don't date a hippie woman. Okay. Because blah 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 and then he talks from his ego, you know, because the hippie woman's gonna make you miserable because blah 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 because she's gonna take over your life and you're not gonna and then the other person just accepts it, hook, line and sinker, never thinks about it. Top down Oh, that must be true, the hippie woman, bad news, I stay away from hippie woman. Okay. So now where's the problem with this example where does the problem come in problem comes in the moment he meets a hippie woman he has a crush on okay but he cannot accept her because his dad or whatever his minister has told him don't date a hippie woman she may she she if you date a hippie woman, you go to hell. Okay, that's people. Some people will say that too. No, that's that's really that's really insane. Knock, knock, knock. Okay, so, but then also she'll take over or she'll convert you to become a hippie. But then what? Then you lose your ego. Well, that would be terrible, you know. In the meantime, you take 
you take DMT, which does that too, to your brain, but in a, in a more dangerous way. It also makes you become a hippie. What do I mean by that? You know, it makes you become more open-minded in that moment. But you can't allow the hippie lady, but you take DMT. So it's a contradiction right there and then. I would never take DMT. I'm just using these things as an example. So, And all of these substances make people then even more gullible. So it's like a, it's the same as uh, other drug addictions. You know, it, those are sub substances that make people temporarily hippie-ishly open-minded. And they like that state. Yeah. <sighs> a relief from the ego and the obsessive, you know, trying to have control over others. Just a, a temporary relief. But just like with other drug addictions, whatever the drug does for you, it, it will bring out that what you try to counteract in the first place, bring that out later on more. Because then you have that's a that's a side effect that's a that's a withdrawal and all of that. Yeah. The same with all those psychedelic drugs. They give you a temporary relief from your ego, and you think this is cool. At the same time, you reject a hippie lady who would do this in a holistic way, and in a healing way. But you take the DMT, and then you have an hour of freedom from ego and you see all kinds of nice things that you would normally not see you're open-minded in that moment for ah relief i can breathe now an hour later the ego hello ego the ego comes back 10 times stronger okay and then you have to suppress the e the hippie lady 10 times more than ever before that DMT experience that made you temporarily be okay with the hippie lady you know with the kind of things she says you know so <laughs> yes it's irritating for me to see all of this behavior in people. <laughs> I am just a human. So, but I am bringing, I'm trying to explain this as good as I can. I'm trying to explain this and convey this as good as I can. Stay away from drugs of any kind. Uh, that includes pharmaceutical drugs. Go the holistic route. That's what I do. Yes, I understand it is it is massively difficult. But it your life is much more miserable if you don't do it. So it's kinda inconvenient to get up and walk out of the way of the bus coming towards you. Well, the bus is not here yet. In ten hours, I can still sit here and talk. What if you forget that, you know, then you get rusty. You can't even get, get up anymore. You get so fat from eating cookies that you can't even get up from that spot. Once the bus gets here, you know, so why not get up from that spot now? This is just a metaphorical example. So, obviously, you know, most beings, when they see a direct imminent danger, they walk away. That's your inner intelligence. That's your body's inner intelligence. Let's use that inner intelligence for psychological complex mechanisms that are happening in us humans, in this, in this complicated, complicated species with these complicated, complex brains. And with this unfortunate hand brain learning on land, you know, using tools and they become weapons, all of that. These things don't happen in the ocean. 
they don't have hands. The, the hands would be in the way. So they don't evolve. They don't haven't evolved in that. They evolved into the real mermaid. The mermaids. The real mermaids have no arms. They have no long hair. Would never. They have no hair on their bodies. They they deliberately look like wetsuits. So they evolved like that. It's obvious. Pakicetos used to have hair. Pakicetos used to live in Pakistan. That's where the name comes from. Pakicetos. Look him up. 48 million years ago. Okay. Gradually evolved into more like an otter, more like a seal, more like larger, you know, marine mammals. Just, just compared and approximate comparison. And then they became whales. Okay, so as they went into the water more and more and more, they lost their fingers and their arms. Okay, it receded. The ones that had, that had atrophied arms were doing better in the water. They were faster. They were more buoyant. They caught more fish. They survived better. They had the chance to have offsprings that survived and so on. This is the broad evolutional mechanism. Okay. And then we also have microevolutional mechanisms that Charles Darwin was not aware of yet at that time, of course. He could not have been, of course. You know, science has also evolved. And now they have found ba Dr. Barbara McClintock has found jumping genes, you know, so that there are genes on our DNA they thought that was empty information. It, it's not. Okay. They, it seems like the entire DNA molecular composition, you know, molecule, complex molecule, yeah. every letter, every amino acid formation on that big amino acid band that's coiled has a meaning and has a function. Okay, so and these functions can be turned on and off. That's what Dr. Barbara McClintock found out. Everyone laughed about her, they ridiculed her. Later on they confirmed it. They said, You were right and she was old and she was like I'm glad you caught on. Yeah, so, But she didn't even care whether they caught on or not. She was so involved and so fascinated with her research that she was doing on plants, actually on corn plants. And because it was very, very, it was very straightforward work with corn plants breeding and mixing and so on. And that's where the, she found that there there is so something called epigenetics. Okay, so there are internal little genetical functions that are happening. Some people compare it to Lamarck, who was who was doing wanted to explain evolution from that t point of view. But a giraffe doesn't grow a long neck in one day. You know. So, so Charles Darwin was right, and his—it's not a theory; it's a fact. Okay, it's—it's it's proven science, and it—it it too is evolving and becoming more complex as it goes. Okay. So no, it's not debunked by anyone, okay? And the missing links have been found, and I can just go on and on and on about this. One missing missing link was found in an area that's Germany today, <laughs> in a, a fossilized tree climbing lemur, okay, where all humans come from, including the ones from Africa. 
you know then you know of, of course um, different species evolved from that tree climbing lemur and they ventured out and, and then people think they they evolved in different places and so maybe there was also another tree climbing lemur somewhere else who had taken on a parallel development but then they would probably not be able to breed so just the fact that these different these different tribes were able to breed the Cro-Magnon were able to breed with Neanderthals they're very very different people think they grew, they they evolved from different smaller animals obviously not or they would not have been able to interbreed so that's the indication that all of them come from this is an animal called Eta was named she was named a female was named after the daughter of the scientist who had been discovering this and working on this so I think scientists from Sweden or from Norway who has been, who's been working on this read it Google it, research it. And Eta, they dated, they carbon dated her back to 47 million years ago. And then how did they look 48 million years ago? That's when Pakisitos was living in, in Pakistan. Pakisitos, the, the land animal who evolved into whales. Okay. So Pakisetos and our ancestor, let's say parallel to Pakisetos 48 million years ago in other places, were probably not looking that different from each other. Okay. Ha they have already branched away from each other, of course. So if you go further back, they have a common ancestor. Okay, so we have a common ancestor with whales a lot of people will not want to they don't want to acknowledge this out of because of the top-down brain propaganda brainwashing that they have been through so they don't want to acknowledge this but i think it is absolutely vital for us to acknowledge the truth where we're coming from, how the species has have evolved, why they have evolved like this, why we have also why we have evolved into tribalism, where the brainwashing is, which was the grounds for brainwashing, the, the tribalism. So with the more convoluted brain, then more convoluted brainwashing, and then all the drama because of that the, the environmental destruction the wars complex wars where people would shoot people they have absolutely never seen those kind of things uh, cruelty you know seeing other people as depersonalized complete disconnect happening in the human brain so I can talk about this for the rest of my life like non-stop give me some Toblerone to fuel my brain cells and I'll just keep on talking to you all day and all night long about this but I don't want to make the videos too long so food for thought is this okay the most important thing for us as a species right now is total radical introspection and we need a complete reform on the way humans have been handling almost everything in the, in the whole, on the whole planet okay from the way they designed and developed cars so we have to move away from fossil fuel okay elon musk is trying real hard to help with this to move that forward to move electric cars and solar energy forward 
which which is which is the the rational smart solution to do to use sunlight okay sunlight technology it's a rational not commonsensical i want to say commonsensical but it's not common that's why i'm not going to say commonsensical it's a smart sensical solution okay and it's free thinking solution so and we need to go convert to complete composting we need to bring the nutrients back into the soil you can't be taking nutrients endlessly out of the soil rudolf steiner warned us about this around 1900 1910 1920 warned us about this people didn't listen to him okay we need complete composting of every biomaterial and biomass okay all biomass needs to be recycled by earthworms and and other insects into fertile black earth soil that is brought back to the planet and to the plants the plants that we eat so we eat plants that contain nutrients that's one leading cause of the sea word that the 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 standard sewage facilities just pumping away nutrients in this process from the land just soil depletion coming out of that that's a real threat that's a bus coming towards us we need to rethink and completely reform and we need to do it as soon as possible okay and also with nuclear nuclear energy that's a bus coming towards us that's massively dangerous fukushima you know we have seen it chernobyl we've seen it many times now or nuclear bombs thrown onto people into the pacific island onto japan what a horror that comes out of that what a horror what a what a destruction that is so unnecessary okay pesticides as another bus coming towards us and last but not least the ego the human ego this this narcissistic repair system okay it's a psychological defense mechanism that does not work that makes the world suffer okay we must do introspection and that's why we need these four therapy centers we need it i'm probably not going to be i'm not going to i'm not a dictator i'm not some kind of like i'm not a guru i'm not saying so we have to do it my way and this is uh, no this is a this is a rational smart solution okay this is a necessity for life on this planet and beyond okay that we do the inwardness process we sit on your couch or in nature and you stop acting out on other people and you stop thinking of other people being perpetrators or this or whatever spinning yourself into a frenzy they are all victims of trauma okay leave them where they are you do your work you have to go into yourself okay that's what i was thinking when i woke up today is this is the work that starts with me with you okay with all of us with each person we're on i level okay with each person this is a process that every one of us has to do to make the world better if we want to make the world better that begins with you okay on all levels but start with your mind that's the most important that's a foundation once you you free yourself from the ego you will see the smart rational solutions for what they are 
you will see them as the smart and as ne the ne necessity solutions okay and you will help to contribute to make it better so instead of creating a thousand troll or sock accounts you can use that massive intelligence which has impressed me by the way you know who i'm talking about of course the 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 king of all narcissistic cunts and my my friend sandy and i were talking we were talking about you and she said and and I and I thought about that before she said it. You know, we were we were both coming to the conclusion that can you imagine what kind of rocket scientist he could be or become if he would funnel that kind of complex convoluted thinking into smart solution thinking. Okay, and questioning all that brainwashing and not using the thousands of different troll account personalities and sock accounts and so on anymore in order to express himself in these multiple ways without fearing someone else judging him. Just be you. And or uh, be okay to be judged. Let them judge you. You know, you take the woman you want, and be okay with them judging you. Okay, you go your path. You question your dad or society, or the the Republican whatever the the rigid way of thinking. And you funnel your intelligence into into making the world better, into living a smart solution lifestyle and not being worried about someone thinking you you have become a hippie, okay? This, this whole word already, but yeah, I'm a hippie. I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm a clean hippie. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Okay, I don't take terrible things. I don't put terrible things in my body. Okay, I don't put pharma drugs in my body. I don't drink coffee. I only put pure stuff into my body, plant stuff that is healing, that's there for us. Okay. But this word hippie, or it's it's just a judgment, you know. But I'm trying to trying to un undo that judgment of that word. Hippie, it's good to be a hippie. That's the smart solution. Okay, let's be natural people. Okay, let's call us natural. You can call us hippies. Call us natural people. That's a natural state. You become you again you you are you except you except yourself that's how you make the world better you funnel your super iq into healing yourself getting rid of all the when you see the bus coming at you you don't take these drugs anymore or the alcohol or any of these toxic things that make you totally crazy that make your life miserable you quit that. That's I, that's my love for you. That I'm. That's what I'm offering to you. Okay. Not because I'm putting myself on a pedestal. I'm saying this as a, as a big sister. Okay. I'm saying this as someone who has been doing a lot of thinking. Okay. I'm trying to help you guys. Okay. So, this making this world better. It begins with you. Do it. Do it. I urge you to do it. Okay? You guys take care.